You know, hopefully everyone likes it, and if not, just don't tell me, but... <laughs> Hi, I'm Chelsea. Um, I am a laboratory technician, a quality technician, a freshness detective, if you will. So, yeah. So, in the lab, we do a lot of testing throughout the beer's life, uh, which we will get more into but we test for different bacterial growth or, and we make sure that all the CAP cycles within uh, the cellar and the packaging hall are done thoroughly so that the beer doesn't get contaminated in any way. Um, so many things throughout on premise of the lab and then also when the beer goes out into the world, we have a quality at email that I'm connected to and so if you ever see beer out there that is past its freshness state, email that and then I respond and we hop on uh, very quickly to get that beer out of there and get fresh beer into that account. So we take a sample uh, many times throughout the life of a beer. The first sample is a forced wort sample that the brewer actually takes. I don't take it. And uh, they take a sample right before they're knocking out into the fermenter. So no yeast is added, it's just wort. And uh, that way we can make sure that the, before even going into the fermenter that the wort is stable and not contaminated. So we take a little sample, sample in a sterile container and put it on, in our little incubator and monitor it for about seven days to make sure there's no bubbles or growth or um, off smell or anything like that. And then the next sample is a sterile sample out of the fermenter and then a sterile sample out of our break tank. And then I also take a sample out of our cans and throughout every sample um, we plate it with an uh, anaerobic and an aerobic uh, environment to see if there's any bacterial growth. So micro hold is necessary for our um, non-hop forward beers. For example, like Saison, Best Life, Oyster Stout, as opposed to any hop forward beers like IPA. Um, and that is because hops are naturally antimicrobial and so they protect against lactobacillus and so we're like a little bit less worried about those types of beers. So beers that do get micro holds, um, we basically hold them for three to four days before they get released and during that time I plate all, I plate those beers, I plate all beers but um, I make sure to do those within that time and then we just make sure that there's no growth and they also get a PCR run, which is a polymerase chain reaction test. And so basically it's a diagnostic test that, ch that checks if there's any certain genetic material that you're testing for um, with it, and it does it by thermal cycles. Um, so we do that, and that's just necessary before they go out in the world to make sure that they're not contaminated in any way. Uh, the two things that we're, actually three things that we're mostly checking for are lactopedia, which is lactobacillus and pediococcus, which is um, a lactic acid bacteria, lactic acid producing bacteria that can cause off flavors, cause the beer to taste sour, and we just don't want that. And then there is diastaticus, which is um, a yeast variant which you don't want in your beer because it can cause uh, re-fermentation, which is bad news when the beer's in a can. Yes, so we have a couple, um, but we need to work on it because a lot of them don't have fun names. The uh, packaging hall and the cellar have much better names. But we have a couple, so our salometer is called Y2 Yeast 2, and then the computer that it's hooked up to that does the counting is called Count Dracula, like obviously. Um, and then our autoclave is uh, Stevie Stevens, which that's my favorite personally. Um, but we have a lot of other equipment that is uh, in need, so we'll work on it. Yes, uh, that is our alkalizer. 
it does a lot. It'll do calories. It'll do um, terminal gravity, original gravity, ABV, all that fun stuff. I don't think I want to tell the audience how many calories are in science reasons because I don't want to deter them from drinking beer. Um, funny story, we recently changed the home screen on the alkalizer. So it'll show you the calories every time you run a sample. So it'll show you the calories per 12 ounces. And uh, no one liked that because now they know how many calories they're drinking. So I just, I don't wanna, I don't wanna bring the crowd down, you know? Future, um, well soon our quality lab manager will be back. That's Carly. Uh, she's been out on maternity leave for about five months now. She'll be back next month. Excited for that because I feel that two people in the lab is ideal so that we can focus on um, like sensory analysis and having our team be really comfortable with tasting notes and also detecting uh, diacetyl so we can see where everyone is at on kind of like a, a, a scale spectrum because some people can detect it just with scent or like just with taste. Some people can do both, but we like to see where everyone is at so that we know like who to call we have actually a, <laughs> a D-Force team, and then we're like, D-Force, you know? So they come in with capes, no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> we gotta get everyone on and see what level they're on. So things like that to just get the team dialed in, it's gonna be, gonna be really nice. Yeah, we were talking about some uh, lab coats. I don't have one, but I think it'd be really cool. Uh, I highly recommend overalls. A lot of us wear overalls now, and I like to think that I kind of started that, but a couple people already wore overalls, but I made it more popular, let's be real. Um, and then I wear a hat all the time, but that's kind of a personal preference. I did it when I started in packaging, because I was driving the forklift a lot, and you have to wear a hairnet when you go through the other facility, and I was tired of my hair getting in my face, and so I'll just do it all the time. And it's kind of cool because with science reasons, uh, I'm on the label, but my hat's also on the label, so you know it's me, you know? So I, I recommend that. Nice. Hit, hit, Josh, we need some damn lab coats. Yeah! <laughs>